Manuel Nonfaco Techniques for Faco Surgeons Cataract surgery is one of the most popular and successful. With smaller incisions, no sutures, topical anesthesia and clearer uncorrected vision, FACO emulsification has become the preferred method of cataract extraction. A die-hard FACO surgeon may need to be familiar with converting to manual 6 especially in case of anticipated complications such as a lengthening FACO time, high FACO energy levels, zonular dialysis, posterior capsular rent or vitreous loss. Manual 6 combines many of the advantages of ECA as well as FACO. It is good for tackling tough cases, such as brown cataracts, and is also suture-less and induces less astigmatism. Although FACO emulsification has many advantages, some cases may require for manual small incision cataract surgery. In this video film you are going to watch, How White Cataract, Nuclear Brown Cataract, Complicate Cataract with Small Down Down Pupil and Subluxated Cataract are managed by Manuel Non-FACO Techniques. Case 1 In this case we are going to demonstrate how a white cataract is taken out through 5 mm incision by intratunnel FACO fracture technique. In white cataracts, the lack of a protective epinuclear and cortical shell increases the risk of a posterior capsule rupture and nucleus drop during FACO emulsification. Weak zonules could also result in zonular dialysis. Where capsular hexis is not possible or extended for those cases MZIX is a wonderful technique. Intratunnel FACO fracture is a new nucleus management technique of the manual small incision cataract surgery, popularly known as MSICS. In this technique maneuverings take place inside sclerocorneal tunnel. The lens nucleus is broken inside the sub-6 mm sclerocorneal tunnel and removed. It's simple inexpensive and reproducible technique. Visual outcome comparable with 3.2 mm clear corneal FACO emulsification. By intratunnel FACO fracture technique all types of the cataracts can be successfully taken out through sub-5 mm wide sclerocorneal tunnel. Other most commonly practiced MSICS techniques are Blumenthal, Visquim expression, irrigating wire vectus and fish hook needle. All these techniques require a 7 to 9 mm large incision, which leads to more astigmatism. In these techniques maneuverings take place inside the anterior chamber, so it poses risk to corneal endothelium and other structures. This patient had clear cornea and 20 by 20 vision next post-operative. Case 2 In this case we are going to demonstrate how a brown nuclear cataract is taken out through 5 mm incision. In this brown cataract the use of excessive ultrasound energy, prolonged surgical time, increased stress on the back zonular complex and greater endothelial damage may lead to a dismal first day post-op outcome, which may result in a longer recovery. Cracking and chopping are both difficult to accomplish in brown cataracts and are often incomplete. Repeated unsuccessful attempts at chopping in the bag could cause stress on the bag zonular complex and result in the disastrous complication of nucleus drop. So we decided to perform manual small incision cataract surgery using intratunnel FACO fracture technique. Intratunnel FACO fracture is a nucleus management technique in which the nucleus is broken inside the corneoscleral tunnel, in contrast to other nucleotomy techniques where maneuvering takes place inside the anterior chamber. Most of the time the nucleus is taken out through a 5 mm wide tunnel. Studies show that 5 mm MZIX results are at par with 3.2 mm clear corneal FACO. Case 3 In this case we are going to demonstrate how a complicated cataract is taken out through 1 mm non-getting dilated pupil. In this case pupil was not getting dilated due to massive iridocapsular adhesions. Iridocapsular adhesions between posterior surface of the iris and anterior surface of the anterior capsule try to broken with help of the iris spatula but could not be succeed. Due to massive iridocapsular adhesions iris hooks and pupil expenders would not be useful. So we decided to do multiple small sphincterotomies in the lower half of the pupillary sphincter with the help of Vanna's scissors. Cane opener capsulotomy is done with 26 gauze needle capsulotomy as capsular hexis is not possible. 
the nucleus is rotated within the capsule using a Sinsky's hook. The nucleus was prolapsed into anterior chamber using a Sinsky's hook. The nucleus is taken out with the help of a lens loop. Rest steps are as usual of any cataract surgery. Case 4 In this case we are going to demonstrate how a subluxated cataract lens is managed by manual small incision cataract surgery. In this case FACO emulsification was not possible as lens was hanging in the vitreous cavity. We pressed scleral wall with the cotton bud tip to bring subluxated lens anteriorly. Then with the help of the Sinsky's hook lens is brought into the anterior chamber. Then cataract lens is taken out from anterior chamber with the help of a lens loop. Otherwise this type of case are managed by vitreo-retinal surgeons with much more extra cost to the patient. Conclusion With an experienced surgeon, FACO emulsification may be possible in all cataract types, but it is important to remember that the chances of complications with FACO are higher in the hands of someone who does not regularly perform such surgeries. Also, there are often instances in which it is advisable to enlarge the FACO incision and convert to MSICS or EK. Hence, manual 6 or other non-FACO manual techniques are a very safe and useful alternative and should be in every cataract surgeon's armamentarium. As both MSIX and FACO have their own limitations, the ideal technique would be one that combines the best of both worlds. We believe MSICS is a wonderful technique and all cataract surgeons should learn this technique.